All right, I am recording from a different location, so no idea how the sound quality is going to turn out. Hopefully not too bad. Um, this video should at least be literally watchable. Um, so let's look at this function, and we're trying to learn how to integrate functions. So, oh hey, there's a typo. Um, but yeah, so what this function looks like is we have this grid. This is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, this is 0, this is x equals 1, this is y equals 1. And then we got x equals 1 half, and we sort of split this down the middle. And in this left rectangle, the function f takes on the value 0, and in the right rectangle, it takes on the value 1. So if you think about it, well, you've got this region where the function is 0, and if you look at the size of this rectangle, it's, let's see, our base is 1 half, and height is 1, so it should have area 1 half. Um, so you integrate the function over that rectangle, and you get 1 half times 0, which is 0. Then for the right rectangle, we see um, uh, base is 1 half, height is 1, so the area of the rectangle is 1, is one half, and the function takes on the value 1, so the integral over that region should be 1 half times 1, which is 1 half. So you add those together and you get 1 half, and that should be the integral of the function, and that is what we're trying to prove. Um, and basically that argument that I just did is exactly what you need to do when you define your, um, it's exactly what you need to do when you uh, use the definition of the integral. The only difference is that you take the supremum and infimum over all such partitions, but um, here it's, this is sort of the easiest case because we can look at a particular partition. And the partition that we're going to look at is precisely this one that I've drawn out here. We take, um, the first, the rectangle on the left, which you go x values from between 0 and 1 half, and y values between 0 and 1, and then the second rectangle is going to be x values between 1 half and 1, and y values between 0 and 1. Alright, and then we basically just use this partition, we go through the, um, let's see here, so we'll have L fp so and then this is going to be m 0 to 1 half times 0 to 1 of f times a volume of 0 to 1 half times 0 1 plus m 1 half 1 cross 0, 1 of f times the volume of 1 half to 1 times 0, 1. So m of a set, m of a rectangle s evaluated at f is the infimum of f over that rectangle. So on the rectangle 0 to 1 half cross 0, 1, the function is always 0, so the infimum is going to be 0. So we get 0 times, and then the volume of that rectangle is going to be 1 half, like we talked about. Now we look at the second rectangle, and the function f, the only value it takes on that rectangle is 1, and so the infimum has to also be 1, and the volume was 1 half, and so we add these together and we get 1 half. Likewise, if we take this um, upper sum, or whatever it's called, u of fp, um, then we do the same thing, but we replace the lowercase m's with uppercase m's, and so instead of looking at the infimum, we look at the supremum. But the supremum is also going to be 0 and 1 respectively, because again, the function, the function only takes on a per one particular value on the set. Um, and so the supremum has to be that value. So the supremum is, again, when we compute this, we're going to get 0 times 1 half plus 1 times 1 half, and it will be 1 half. Um, all right. So 1 half is the lower sum of f at this particular partition p 
But now we know that for any, um, this is certainly going to be less than or equal to the supremum o over all lower sums. Or yeah, you take the supremum over all partitions of the lower sum of f at that partition. Um, and we also know from the textbook that the supremum of the lower sums is always going to be less than or equal to the infimum of the upper sums. And that's because given any two partitions, p1 and say p1 and p2, the lower sum of f at p1 will always be less than or equal to the lower sum of f at p2. And so then you can take um, infima, you could take supremum on the left and infimum on the right, and the inequality will still hold. Okay, so we have this infimum here, and this is um, going to be, well, this is the infimum over all partitions, so it's going to be in particular less than or equal to um, u f at a particular partition p, which is again one half. So equality holds throughout which means f is, and I'll just write integrable, so that's an integral sign, and then a bowl is, yeah. So integrable with the integral over the set, and I'll just write this set squared instead of 0, 1 cross 0, 1. The integral is precisely 1 half, because we know a function is integrable if the supremum of the lower sums is precisely equal to the infimum of the upper sums, and in that case, the integral is precisely whatever that value is that those two things equal. Okay, so this is sort of the best you can hope for in trying to compute an integral. Um, it's that you can actually find a partition that exactly gives you the integral. And if you're able to do that, then by this type of argument, you're able to compute the integral exactly. And... Um, yeah, that's pretty much the important part of this exercise, and so now we're done with this proof.